Come on in. I am so happy that you're here. I've been waiting for you guys all day. I love when I get us all ready for bed and sleep and relaxation. So, oh, I see some new people. Hi, new people. Come on in. Come on in. Be welcome. I'm glad you're here. Please feel free to like or to share. Definitely comment. I love, love, love interacting with you guys. I really do. Um, the comments just make this big old world a little bit smaller. And I see my return. Oh, and please hit that subscribe button, please. And I see my returning people. You guys, please, please keep coming back. And please keep those comments coming. I absolutely adore them. I really do. And I really love when you guys comment to each other, too. Um, it just shows me that we're really part of this big community, which makes me very happy. So I thought tonight we would get ready and I'd do some reading to you and I have two new books I want to show you. So the first one, I told you I was getting it. I'm all hooked right now on the little golden books. But it's inside out. Except for Coco, and this one even more so than Coco. Only cartoons that have ever affected me affect animated cartoons, whatever. I'm old, leave me alone. This one I love, and it fits so well into everything we talk about with emotions and how they all work together, and we need each one. We do, okay? So I'm going to read this one to us. I also have another chicken soup for the soul book, Making Me Time, 101 Stories About Self-Care and Balance. So this is a whisper soft spoken, okay. Um, but what I love about this book, it's, I haven't even read one of the stories yet because um, for the new people, I never choose the story ahead of time when it's in a book like this. I have faith and I read, I open it and wherever I land is a story one of you needs to hear tonight. So that's, I can't wait for that. What? What's that? Well, you know, I, I, I was getting these two books and you know, three is a good number to get. What is it? It's a book. All right, fine. I bought another journal, okay? But this one's cool and it's refillable. Granted, I thought it had lined pages, but they're blank, but that's okay. They look old fashioned. And I love this metal and the rivets. It's so cool. Okay, we won't talk about that. But let's get you guys ready for some sleep. Okay, for the new people, we do some breathing techniques, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, first, we're going to get the room the way that we want it. So I want you to set up your lights the way you want it. Um, for me, I don't know where my glasses are for another time. I don't know where they are. We'll find them. Um, but for me, I have the lights on tonight. Um, just It helps me with the reading. But you can have them light. You can have them dark. You can wear sleep masks because the books I read, well, the first one, yes, I'm going to show the pages. But the next book, that one I don't show pictures because there isn't any. So you can just zone out and listen to me read and go to sleep. The next thing, get the lighting. You can have candles as long as they're electric. No lit candles. That's my one rule. Not when you're trying to sleep. And if your relaxation can lead to sleep, no lit candles, guys. It's dangerous and you are far too important to me to risk it. Okay. Thank you. Now we're going to do our breathe. Well, no, first we're going to get ourselves comfy. So wherever you want to sit, whether it's a couch, a chair, a chaise, a bed, a lounger, a hammock, cushions on the floor, whatever, whatever makes you comfortable, just sink into it. I've got a cushion behind my back right now. Just be comfortable, okay? Cover up if you need it. Now we're going to do our breathing. And we do this, for, this is for the new people. Um, returners, you can talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so We do this to train our brain. And we do this when we want to rest, 
when we want to relax, when we feel uh, panic or anxiety start, we're going to try to quell it down, and when we just need that moment to ourselves, we're going to do this breathing. And we're going to breathe in through the nose for a count of four. We're going to gently hold it for a count of four. And then we're going to breathe out through pursed lips for a count of four. Okay, good. Let's try that together. Breathe, And that's if you can. If for any reason you can't, you do what you can. This is about you. I know you're doing the best you can. And that's more than enough, okay? So let's breathe in. One, two, three, four. Gently hold it. One, two, three, four. Out. Good. Breathe in. Gently hold it. One, two, three, four. Out. Good. And all together. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold it. I'm going to start with Disney Pixar's Inside Out. Okay, this is Joy. She is an emotion who lives in Riley's mind. Ever since Riley was born, Joy has been in charge of keeping our girl happy. Joy is very, very good at her job. Joy works in headquarters inside Riley's mind, along with Riley's other emotions. Fear helps to keep Riley safe. Anger helps Riley to express herself if she thinks something is unfair, like eating broccoli. Disgust helps Riley stay away from yucky things, like broccoli. And then there's sadness. Joy doesn't understand sadness. She tries to keep sadness away from the controls and away from Joy's memories. Joy is proud that most of Riley's memories are happy ones and she wants to keep it that way. The most imp important memories are called core memories. They power the islands of personality. There's Family Island, Honesty Island, Hockey Island, Friendship Island, Goofball Island. These all make Riley, Riley. Everything is great until Riley and her family move to a new city. Riley misses her friends. Their new house is a mess. And pizza has broccoli on it. The emotions don't know what to do. Sadness touches a yellow memory and it turns blue. When Joy tries to stop her, all of Riley's core memories get knocked loose. Joy, sadness, and all of the other core memories get sucked out of headquarters. And they end up deep inside Riley's mind. Joy is worried. What will happen to Riley if she's not there to make her happy? Joy tries to stay positive. She tells Sadness they need to get back to headquarters to return all the core memories. And that's the only way is to go through the islands of personalities. Things aren't going well back at headquarters. Without Joy to run things, the other emotions have to take charge. Fear, anger, and disgust are making Riley act differently. She's a sore loser at hockey tryouts. She talks back to her parents. And at school, she's alone and sulks. Without her core memories in place, Riley's islands of personalities start to crumble away. While traveling back to headquarters, Joy and sad Sadness run into Riley's old imaginary friend, Bing Bong. 
He is sad because Riley has forgotten him. Joy is surprised to see this sadness is able to comfort Bing Bong. Perhaps sadness is good for something after all. And meanwhile, anger gives Riley a terrible idea. She's going to run away. On their journey, Joy is surprised to find out that she and Sadness share a lot of the same memories. It was after a hockey game back in Minnesota, Sadness remembers that Riley missed the winning shot and felt awful. Joy replays the memory and sees that Riley was really sad, but that her family and friends made her feel better. And Joy now understands that sometimes Riley needs to be sad before she can feel happy again. Joy and Sadness finally make it back to headquarters, and they're just on time. Riley's on a bus. Joy urges Sadness to take over the controls. All the emotions watch as Sadness touches the console. Riley begins to feel sad right away. She misses her parents. She yells for the bus driver to stop. Riley races home. She cries and cries, and she tells her parents how sad she is about all the changes and differences and how much she misses Minnesota. But while she tells her parents and they comfort her, she starts to feel better. She smiles through her tears. Before long, Riley adjusts to her new life in San Francisco. She has new friends, a new hockey team, and all the five emotions are now working as a team. That's a good one. Okay, you guys, you can now close your eyes if you want. I'm thinking I can't read this. Okay, I'm going to try to read this without my glasses. This one is called Slow Cooking, Slow Living. And they always have a quote at the beginning. If you neglect to recharge your battery, it dies. And if you run full speed ahead without stopping for water, you know the momentum, you will no longer have the momentum to finish the race. Oprah Winfrey. Okay, I swear I did not open this book, but there's the recharging your batteries line. See, it works. <laughs> okay. I dropped a crock pot on my bare feet. More accurately, it slipped down the back steps of our house on a rainy night in November while carrying the ceramic insert for a crock pot. In the nanoseconds that followed, I tossed the cookware in the air and grabbed for the, the railing so that I wouldn't tumble like a rag doll down the stairs. I could picture the headline, Mother's Dies Doing Dishes After Dinner. I managed to stay upright and landed on my backside my feet in front of me, which was a victory except that the crock pot also landed upright and on my feet, where it cracked in two. The juices I was trying to dispose of in the outdoor thrash flew in the air defying gravity until I landed on the back bottom step and then it rained down upon me. At that precise moment, our dog saw the back door wide open and took the opportunity to escape into the unfenced yard. He flew past me into the rain, and when he caught the scent of the juices, he stopped in his tracks. He ran back to the stairs, sat down right beside me on the bottom step, and began licking the juices off my arms and face. By the time I was able to stand up and hopple inside, both the dog and I were soaking wet. If you ever drop a crock pot on your foot, which I do not recommend, let me offer you some advice. Walk on your heels to lessen the pain in your toes. The act would be difficult for me in a normal situation because I have the dexterity of a sloth, but it's even harder when you're trying to walk there with a wet dog who wants to spread his smelly odor all over every piece of furniture in the house. 
One hour and several towels later, both the dog and I were dry, but exhausted. In the following days, I faced two challenges as a result of my tumble down the stairs. Problem number one, shoes. I couldn't wear traditional footwear because where the crockpot had landed and cracked, the shards created two deep gashes on my toes and feet. The only thing I could do was slip on house shoes. Problem number two, wardrobe. My fall down the stairs left monolithic bruises on my buttocks, arms, legs, and back, making every stitch of clothing uncomfortable. The only solution I could come up with was yoga pants. These fashion choices are fine if you spend your days at home, but they're not so stylish to go out in public, especially in the South where a trip to the grocery store merits full makeup and a cute outfit. So I had two choices. I could stay home for a week while I healed, or I could suck it up. I chose the latter. Life goes on even if you drop a crockpot on your foot. However, my daily routine slowed to a crawl because I had to walk in such small paces, and I had to cancel non-essential outings and appointment. Who wants to hang out with a girl wearing slippers in public? Oops. Sorry, Bella's here. One second. One. No, no, go away from me. Who wants to hang out with a girl wearing slippers in public? At first, I resented the interruption in my plans. But I soon realized that my injuries had given me a gift. Spare time. I rediscovered long forgotten joys I had tossed aside because I was just too busy for them. I read a book for pleasure, not for educational purposes or for career tips. I caught up with friends and family in emails. I started texting people. I spent time in meditation and silence. I experimented with my watercolor set, and my spirit came alive again. I had been living in such a frenzied pace for so long, it had become my daily routine. Get up early, bury myself in my tasks at work, run errands on the way home, help my daughter with homework, cook supper, clean up, do housework, collapse in the evening with no recollection of what I'd actually done for the last 12 hours. When I was forced to slow down, I realized how unhealthy my lifestyle had become, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually as well. Something had to change or I was going to suffer the consequences. Finding a healthier balance has been an ongoing process, but I have been able to get some, some improvement. I have stopped cramming my schedule with back-to-back -back meetings and obligations. I try to leave some margins in my time so I can breathe and think and pray. I pay attention to my emotions, especially those that tell me what I should do. There is a red flag telling me I'm living for others' expectations and not my own. And above all, I make sure for the activities and practices that bring me joy, like going for walks or enjoying a meal with good friends, come first. Now, I'm not a pro at this self-care stuff. Sometimes I take on too much. I worry what others think when I say no. I don't always pay attention to my emotions. And I don't always make time for myself. But I am learning. And sometimes, by the grace of God, I manage to get it right. Just a few minutes ago, my daughter plopped down beside me on the couch and put her head in my lap, which was occupied by my laptop. I took the hint. I turned my computer off. I focused on her. She didn't share any earth-shattering news or needed advice. She just wanted to know what was for dinner, and she told me that she wanted for Christmas. That list changes daily. Then she just lay in the silence as I played with her hair. For one whole minute, we connected. Then she set off to conquer a game on her phone. This encounter reinforced the importance of self-care. If I hadn't been learning to take care of myself, if I had, was overloaded and overwhelmed and trying to do too much, I might have missed this moment. I might have sacrificed my relationship with her for the expectations at my work. But I am grateful for those minutes. I chose Wiley and I was well benefited. 
there will be instances where my needs trump hers and I will need to tell her that I'll come back to her. But that's okay. I'm modeling self-care for her. Every time I cook in our new crock pot, I remember the importance of slowing down and of living with purpose and intentionality. I make sure my schedule isn't overloaded. I remember to ask for help when I need it. And I try to pick up my paintbrushes more often. And I never, ever walk down the stairs with a crock pot in my hands. Pam Gibbs. See, what were we talking about? Okay, my little angels, it's time for you to sleep. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely sleep. And always remember, I love you. I value you. I honor you. And I'm so very, very glad.